A little bit about Chemtura. Chemtura is a uh, global specialty chemical company headquartered in Philadelphia in the U.S. Uh, it was established in 2005 by the merger and acquisition of a number of companies, the latest being in 2005, when what, what had been Crompton was, uh, was merged with or acquired uh, Great Lakes and, uh, and formed what was then named Chemtura. Uh, about $3 billion in revenue in 2011. We have about 4,400 employees across the globe and manufacturing 31 plants in 14 countries and we sell in over 100 countries around the world. Uh, we run a, a global business with regional headquarters uh, in the major geographies. For uh, Asia Pacific, that's in Shanghai. Uh, for the U.S., or North America, it's in Connecticut, in Middlebury, Connecticut. In Latin America, it's in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And, uh, and then a combination between Fraunfeld, Switzerland, outside of uh, Zurich, and uh, Manchester, England, Trafford Park in the UK are the uh, are the regional headquarters for for Europe. We've got a vision, like a lot of specialty chemicals company companies, of uh, creating value by providing sustainable competitive advantages. Really, what specialty chemicals companies do is provide solutions to problems. And that's really what differentiates us from a commodity chemical company that provides product. We provide solutions that can come in, and it does come in chemical products, but also service and support. So it's very important that we are located and have people, have facilities, have research and application laboratories in all the major geographies that we serve. Again, very, very critical for, uh, for our Asia Pacific market, headquartered in Shanghai, but also is getting more specifically uh, for the Indian market, and I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the pending acquisition of Solaris Chemtech and their bromine business and how that fits in with that strategy as we go forward. I've talked with analysts in New York uh, and, in, and, in, uh, and in Europe where we're listed on the Euronext Exchange in Paris about what our strategic objectives are. These are kind of metrics that we measure ourselves against as we try to grow this business. Uh, we want as an overall obje objective to grow this business and we set a target of doubling the size of the business in five years. While revenue isn't the critical metric for us, it is an indication of how we're trying to grow this business significantly. If you're going to double the size of the business, we need to do things other than just grow organically. We need to make acquisitions and, uh, and mergers and ventures uh, to be able to accelerate that growth, especially in the fast-growing regions like Asia-Pacific, India specifically. Uh, so our goal is to grow from 3 to $6 billion to improve our bottom line margin from the low teens to 20%. And importantly for this region, to grow our percentage of revenue from fast growing regions. Again, for us, it's Asia Pacific and Latin America, primarily from about 24% in 2011 to about 50% of that $6 billion by 2017. We focus on some end use markets where we've got the right to play, where we've got some strong channels to market, we've got some sound technology, and those are as listed electronics and energy, transportation, and agriculture markets that are very, very important in, uh, in Asia Pacific and India, and so our, our strong focus on the Indian marketplace. Overarching all the things we do relative to these objectives and the strategy to achieve those objectives are some guiding principles that Kemtura will continue to not compromise on. EHS, environmental health and safety, very, very critical to us, and we apply the same standards globally that we apply under the Responsible Care Banner in North America, uh, whether we're in Brazil, whether we're in India, whether we're in China, whether we're in Eastern Europe or, or, or the Middle East. So that's very, very critical to us to keep our employees safe, be good neighbors, and be good and strong environmental stewards. Uh, treat people fairly, that's the people management part. Doesn't mean you always do what the people want you to do, but if you treat people fairly and with respect, uh, that's critical to our overall culture. And then ethics and compliance. You know, we're going to win, we're going to grow, we're going to meet those objectives I talked about, but we're going to do it in an ethical way with strong governance and rigor and discipline and, and, and certainly respecting cultural differences. But under that overarching umbrella, we're going to do things the right way or it doesn't count. So that's really critical to us as we go forward. As we look at what we're trying to do in, in India, it's bringing best practices from the environmental side, from the safety side, and really 
building on what, uh, what we've done in our Gajrula plan and our Control Agri Solutions business and what we anticipate, anticipate doing uh, at the sites that come with the acquisition of the Solaris bromine and brominated products, uh, brominated products assets. I mentioned our growth strategy is, is uh, doubling the size of the business and, uh, and really focusing on innovation in fast growing regions. These pie charts just give an indication of specifically Asia Pacific. So in 2011, out of our $3 billion in revenue, a little less than 20% came from Asia Pacific. By 2016, the, the, the fifth year of that five-year plan, the size of the pie is supposed to double, but as importantly, we're growing from about $600 million in revenue in Asia Pacific to $2 billion in revenue in Asia Pacific. Again, about two-thirds of that organically through our own investments in the region, uh, capital investments, people investments, technology investments, but a significant chunk, as much as a third, uh, will have to come and we anticipate coming from M&A activity, so making acquisitions, mergers of either assets or technology. So anticipating this growth, as this slide said, we've identified both Asia Pacific, think of $2 billion, and India as focused fast growing regions for us. If we're going to be $2 billion in Asia Pacific, and you do the math and you look at the markets we're in and where they're growing, our revenue in, in, uh, in India specifically needs to approach $500 million by the end of that five year period. Again, the fastest, the fastest and the steepest slope of any of the countries that we're operating in. To try to kickstart that and, and broaden our base of, of assets internally beyond our agro solutions business, we agreed to acquire back in September the bromine assets of Solaris Chemtech. They're a leading manufacturer of bromine and bromine derivatives in India and a leader in the marketplace. We just today were at before this at the inauguration of our, our new office in Delhi. It's a much larger footprint than our current office, our current headquarters office in India, which was in Noida, and uh, and really allows us to both accommodate some of the people that will come to Solaris deal, but also our other industrial businesses. Kemtura has seven businesses, five of which will play strongly in India and, uh, and so this allows us to, to really populate our staff there and support of the growth of those other businesses as well. Uh, and yesterday uh, Ananda and I were down at our Gajrula uh, plant there where we inaugurated a brand new office that we built there and an expansion of, of that facility specifically for our agro solutions business. So significant investment in this region uh, bringing Ananda on in, in, in 2011 as the leader of our India business was really another big step for us in trying to put together a very sound strategy on how we're going to grow India specifically across the portfolio of businesses that uh, Kim Tem Kim Tura operates. Uh, we've made significant investments in people in, in India and uh, we'll have 60, I guess, people in the office as it, as it rolls out uh, during November here and anticipate growing that as the business grows and we need increased functional support to be able to deliver the kind of value we're looking to deliver. So that's going to be critical for us. I guess the, the, the last bullet on here, allocated, allocated resources for growing the India business, we've retained a, an outside consultant to help us determine the best way from a market perspective to approach growing from about $50 million to $500 million in five years. The, the heads of all the businesses at least five of the businesses that I, that I talked about will operate here, including Ann, will be here at the end of November uh, with the consultants under Ananda's guidance to be able to discuss how we're going to come up with a strategy for each of those businesses that in total will allow us to, uh, to reach that $500 million goal. So it's a critical step to bring all of those GMs, global GMs, into India at one time. That's not happened before to really focus on specifically not only Asia Pacific, but India as a growth opportunity for us as we go forward. So that'll be a big, a, big, uh, a big event from my perspective, and I look forward to the report out on that. It's a start, you know, we have a lot of work to do, but uh, we're, we're doing it, I think, in the right way. <clears throat> this map here shows uh, what, was, what are the assets that were included in this sale that we, in, that we announced the, uh, the agreement on that anticipate closing in the next couple of months. And you can see the, uh, the Kavda site up on the uh, Pakistan, near the Pakistani border is, uh, is the, the bromine site and it's there because that's where the bromine is. Uh, that was included in the acquisition as well as the site down in Baroda which 
not only provides the opportunity for us to add our technology into the uh, bromine derivatives and specific products that Solaris had made before targeting agriculture and pharmaceutical and broaden that technology and increase that capacity, but it also is a site that has a footprint that allow us to consider it for investment for our other industrial businesses. It's in a good location relative to, uh, to those businesses and there's, there's plenty of availability of land there to be able to, to do that and we get encouragement from the Gujarat government to be able to make those investments. So we're very much looking forward and those are the meetings that we had that uh, Ananda was referring to earlier this week when we're meeting the officials, government officials there. Uh, so we see some real opportunity with this acquisition not only for Great Lakes Solutions, which is the bromine business within Chemtura, but for our other industrial businesses as a place to put a solid footprint for growth as we, as we push towards this $500 million goal. Specifically, if we look at the, uh, the benefits of this acquisition that we intend to close in the next 60 to 90 days, it provides us another source of bromine. It'll put Chemtour in a very unique position where we have sources of bromine and it's a very scarce resource in North America, in our, in our site down in Arkansas, in the Middle East through our relationship with uh, Israeli Chemical, and now in Asia Pacific. None of the uh, there's three big players, global players in, uh, in bromine, we're the only that has those three sites. That provides us security supply, which is very important to them, and provides us access to bromine in the fastest growing market, which is Asia Pacific. And so that's very, very important. I think will be a strong selling point for us as we look at and look at our future growth in this business. Uh, it allows us to really build on what Solaris has already done as a leader, as I mentioned, in bromine chemistries in agriculture and pharmaceuticals in India. Uh, we can expand that with our other technologies and we intend to do that both in capacity and capability over the next couple of years as we invest in these sites. Uh, the brine reserves there allow us as we develop them to further expand our capacity. This is a high growth business in areas outside of the traditional electronics, pharmaceutical, agriculture and things like uh, mercury control for coal fired boiler, coal fired utility emissions. Uh, so there's a significant opportunity there and, and again with all the coal burned in Asia Pacific, specifically China and India, a big opportunity for us in the future as well. And as I mentioned, it allows us to have a footprint to build the other businesses and, uh, and the, the, build the asset base in India for our industrial businesses as they participate in the growth opportunities here. Furthermore, as I mentioned, we have other businesses that can invest here. We have a strong synthetic lubricants business, that's PAO, polyalpha olefins, for wind turbine systems, very important in India as they look at renewables. Refrigeration oils for compressors in, uh, in, in a large number of uh, applications from refrigeration to air conditioning. Automotive, a lot of applications in our, in our uh, additives businesses in automotive lubricants and organic spe organometallic specialties go into catalysts for polyolefin production, but also for synthesizing agents in, in uh, fine chemicals and pharmaceuticals. So critical markets in, in India specifically and a large opportunity for our technical capability as we've grown it elsewhere in the world. The, the focus that we want to have on those markets really aligns itself, as I mentioned when I first started the comments, with the major industries that are part of the growth stream in India. Transportation, agriculture clearly, pharmaceutical, fine chemicals, and, and others. So we look at this, we have an application center. I mentioned that we need to be close to where our customers are, along with the Broda site is a technology center there at that site that we can use to expand and do application development work to allow us to fine tune our products to solve those customer problems that I mentioned as really the core of what a specialty chemical company does. So we'll do that for the specific needs of the Indian market.